who's the ideal candidate? And I have uh, five five uh, ideal situations. And so uh, the first one is young individuals with high incomes. So when I say young individuals, I'm I'm saying you know probably somebody that's about 28 and up. Uh, typically, it's been it's been my uh, you know my experience that people under 28, not that they can't make high income, they're just not really interested in retirement or uh, you know getting life insurance at that age, right? But you have some that uh, you know maybe they're college degree, maybe they're uh, in the corporate world and they're earning a high income, or perhaps you know maybe they're a small business owner, which we'll talk more about later, but. I would say the, the ideal age for retirement solutions would be 28 to 40 with a high income. Um, the second one is going to be an older person, maybe somebody even in their 60s, that they're looking for a higher death benefit than what final expense could offer. So, uh, you know, it just depends on how you structure it. So the one thing about universal life I always like to tell agents, replace the word universal with flexible, because that's what it is. It's a flexible life insurance policy, and you can flex or adjust different things. So if you had somebody in their 60s, and maybe they need, you know, 75, 100,000, or possibly a higher death benefit, but because of their age, the cost of insurance is going to be too high going whole life but they're looking for a permanent policy, then definitely an IUL could be the solution. Um, the third one would be uh, families that are looking to build college savings for their younger children. Uh, I did this for my son when he was seven. Um, I got a really nice IUL policy and I'm overfunding it. It's building the cash value for him. Um, the fourth one, and really probably this is probably the number one um thing to look for regardless of age or income is you're looking for somebody that's a saver okay you're not looking for that person that's going you know paycheck to paycheck you're looking for that person that is really a truly a saver you know i've met a lot of people that they don't really make that much money but they're smart enough to put and discipline probably is a better word to put some money away out of every you know dollar that they earn and they have a pretty nice savings and it's those people that are savers that really and truly are going to be the ideal candidate for an IUL regardless of their age even if they're older if they're savers we can use somebody else um, as a surrogate if you will to be the insured. So, you know, just to touch on that, it might be somebody in their 60s, um, maybe they're too old or, or maybe they wouldn't qualify health-wise, but maybe their children or grandchildren are healthy and young, the cost of insurance would be low enough that we can, uh, you know, put a plan together to accumulate some cash value for them. So it just depends. With the universal life, what are you wanting to do? What is your goal? Are you trying to accomplish retirement? Are you trying to accomplish death benefit? Once you identify that, then you then you can structure it accordingly. And then uh, the fifth category I have are, are small business owners. Uh, IULs are are really ideal for them. Typically, small business owners, uh, the key to selling to them is that you want their business to pay the premium. They love it when they don't stroke the check for it, but the business strokes the check for it, right? And so why is that important? Well, it doesn't come out of their personal proceeds. And if it's a business expense, it's also a tax deduction, right? Now, we'll, I will uh, put a little disclaimer here, and that is, if the business pays for it, then the death benefit is not tax free, right? So it's the opposite. They're going to get a tax deduction, but the death benefit is taxable. Um, for most business owners, they're okay with that because they're looking to save on their taxes. 
you know, most small business owners that I work with, they're in the tax bracket either 22, 24, or 32%. That's that's the majority of them, right? I would say probably between 24 and 32%. So think about this. If you're at a 24% tax bracket, 24% is deducted from or is there going to be their savings, right? So if, if their premium is $1,000, that's a $1,000 deduction. If they're at a 24% tax rate, they're basically saving 250 real dollars. That's like buying life insurance on sale. I don't know if that if that makes sense. Did, did that hit home, Joe, or no? Say that one more time. Okay, so if you're a small business owner and your tax rate is at 24%, right that means that when you take a thousand dollar deduction you're actually realizing 24 percent or 240 real dollars off of your tax return absolutely yeah right got it. so you you pay a thousand dollar premium at the end of the year you're going to get 240 dollars back in taxes right yeah. most small business owners they're doing like ten thousand dollar annual premiums so they're getting a twenty four hundred dollar return on their tax return right and it came out of their business right so like you might not understand how that works but you know just trust me i do this all the time with business owners uh usually the business it's a pass-through income to their personal return so the business is stroking the check for the premium but the business owner is actually receiving the uh reduction in taxes on their personal return so um that's a that's a big one now why would the small business owner want an iul or what purposes could it be you know used for in their business right so i'm going to give you some examples first off you have what they call key man right that's that's the name of it key man and so when whenever there's a small business maybe they have a key person could be male or female in their organization that if that person all of a sudden passed away that it would financially impact the organization it could be an operations manager it could be a general manager it could be somebody in sales whoever this key individual is it would negatively impact or affect their business if that person died so the business owner can ensure that key person it's a tax deduction, right? And and they would actually become the beneficiary. They being the business would be the beneficiary so that it would help, um, I guess, offset that negative financial impact if that person were to die, right? So we can get into the details and the weeds on that later, but that's really the purpose of it, right? The second thing that you can do it for is buy sell agreements. Oftentimes you come across small business owners that have partners, you know, maybe it's a restaurant, maybe it's a uh, roofing company, you know, there, there's hundreds of different businesses out there, but they have uh, multiple partners. Well, what were to happen if there was a partnership, let's say just two or maybe three, three partners. And if one of the partners were to pass away, well, what happens to that partner's business interest? their ownership interest. So that's what a buy-sell agreement does. So I love buy-sell agreements because typically what's gonna happen here is you're gonna put a value, you're gonna evaluate the business. And let's say that, I don't know, let's say that business is valued at, I don't know, 3 million, we'll make it easy. So that's a million a piece. So you would insure all three partners for a million dollars. And that way in the event that one partner were to pass away, the remaining partners would be the beneficiaries. They would use the proceeds from the insurance to buy out that party's interest in the business. So in other words, they're gonna go to the widow or widower, they're gonna go to the deceased family and pay them their interest to buy them out. Does that make sense, Joe? It does make sense. Yeah. And this this happens. It's very common. This is a very common problem that a, a lot of small businesses have is they don't have a buy sell agreement in place. 
So basically with the buy sell agreement, you're agreeing ahead of time on what the value of the company is, and you're agreeing ahead of time uh, the, in the event of one of the partners is going to pass away, that they're going to buy out that partner's interest paying their family. And so that's the way it works. I mean, this is a big solution. Uh, it's a great way to get multiple death benefits or multiple policies because you're writing the part, all the partners. Um, so what's the best way to present this or how do you present this to a business owner where it's, well, it really starts with qualifying the client and really digging in and asking good quality questions. The first question I like to ask small business owners are, what are your biggest challenges in business right now? And just let them respond. You know, that's an open-ended question and that could go anywhere. Their biggest challenge might, need, might be that they need more vehicles, more trucks or more equipment. It might be payroll, or it might be, you know, a buy-sell agreement. You don't know, but you have to just listen, right? Listen, ask all the questions, and then you then you can, you know, kind of figure out, well, how, how am I going to make this fit? If, if none of their answers, I guess, kind of like relate to life insurance, then maybe you ask that question that can tie it in. Like, do you have partners? Do you all have a buy-sell agreement? What would happen if one of the partners were to pass away who who's going to take on that person's interest is it going to be his wife well how do you feel about being partners with you know so and so's wife and usually they don't want to be partners with the wife because maybe they they don't really have knowledge of the industry or uh the the same business acumen so they want to buy out that party right um let me see here. What some other good questions would be about, you know, do you have a key man? What would happen to your business if one of these key people uh, were to disappear? Maybe they, you know, passed unexpectedly. How would that affect your business? You know, do you need a bonus structure for these key men? Because you could also do an executive bonus program. And the executive bonus you know, just to give you a quick, simple answer is going to be the cash value that accumulates over time, right? So I'm not expecting you to go out and, you know, uh, uh, figure all this out by yourself. That's what I'm here for. So if you find a small business owner and you find a need, you can always get with Joe or myself and we can uh, put that case design together uh, and even help you present it if necessary. But, uh, you know, working with, with small business owners uh, could be very valuable. Not only are you getting those policies, but then it really opens up the door to the entire business organization. You can then ask if you could put something together for their employees. Uh, maybe that small business owner might even be willing to do what they call a list bill, which is not a group plan, but they're able to take the uh, premiums out of their payroll and then they just send send it in. So, I mean, there, there's all kinds of opportunities that open up from this. Uh, other opportunities could be maybe that small business owner is interested in doing either a 401k or a, a defined uh, benefit plan for their employees, which when I structure these, I structure them with life and annuity products for their retirement. And it really gives the business owner a lot of uh, tax deductions. There's also some tax credits for setting that up. Uh, so it's, it's, it's re just really a good way to uh, introduce yourself to the business owner is, you know, asking some key questions. So I don't know. I'm going to turn it back over to you, Joe. Are there any other questions that you have? I do have a couple of questions. How, what's, your, um, what's your time like? How, many, how much longer do you have? Okay. I got about eight minutes. Okay, so just to clarify, if if I'm if I'm selling the IUL to a business owner, um, and the business is paying for it, um, to 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 clarify, the premiums would be a tax deduction, mm -hmm. but the upon death that would then become a taxable event. That is correct. Okay, all right. Now, my other question is, is that in this situation, if we're selling to a small business owner, 
um, who actually owns the policy? Do we make the the individual or the business owns it? Or does uh, it not? Technically, it's supposed to be the business, Joe, but um, you know, there's some gray area on that. Okay, all right. So, okay, maybe what what's the most important thing is actually who's the payor, who's stroking the check, right? The business. Got it. Okay. All right. Um, and then uh, my own, my other real quick question is, um, what type of businesses, if, if a you know if, if a if an agent wanted to start prospecting towards businesses, do you have any ideas or thoughts about you know what type of businesses would be um, a, a, a you know a good candidate to prospect? A profitable business. <laughs> um, Any I business. I mean, I, I think it depends on the individual what their comfort level is. And what I mean by that is like, you know, maybe your personality and your comfort level is blue collar. Then go talk to blue collar businesses. Talk to construction companies. Uh, talk to, you know, roofing companies or, uh, uh, you know, anything that has to do with, you know, I'm going to say like manual labor. If you're, you know, a higher end, more professional, go talk to a doctor or a lawyer. I mean, it, it, there's really no special type of business. It just depends where your comfort level is. All right. That's per, that's the answer I was looking for. So there's no really no any any small business owner would work. Um, uh, but ideally, we're looking we're looking for a profitable business, regardless of what industry they're in. Yep. Where they have some uh, uh, can see the, the the benefit of, you know, because a, a, a company that's losing money um, isn't really necessarily concerned about a tax write off. They're exactly. Not, they're not paying taxes anyway. <laughs> so so the 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 thing I would look for is look for a business that really, um, I guess you can say, was impacted positively by COVID. I mean, there's some industries that have just really exploded. You know, the roofing industry has exploded. Uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of anything that has to do with home improvements or real estate has just gone crazy. Yeah, um, for sure. Small, small bike stores. You know, the bicycle industry has exploded. You know, if you need a part right now, you're probably going to wait weeks for a for a part on a bicycle can you imagine it's because everybody's out exercising now right yeah so i know i went to go buy my daughter my um this was this well i'm going back this is in the spring uh we're like hey let's do some biking over the summer went to the bike store they're like huh, nah we're like we're, we're sold out and we won't get you know we can put your name on a list maybe next summer you can get a bike mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah. really? Like I was in total shock. Crazy. I had, this, I had the same experience, Joe. <laughs> so it's, yeah, it's crazy right now. So, I mean, there are different industries that just really, you know, um, came through, you know, in a positive way with COVID. Those are the ones I would go after. Right. Hey, Michael, and I know Jimmy's got to run, but any quick questions for Jimmy before he takes off? I just, as always, you know, the, the love being with Senior Solutions because of the sheer resources we have here. And Joe, if any of the new agents are a little intimidated by what we're talking about here, ladies and gentlemen, as I'm getting ready to talk about, even though you're in business for yourself, you're never by yourself. That's what Jimmy Hernandez, our certified financial planners here, and Joe. So if we spoke about anything on the phone, especially for the new agents, Jimmy and Joe, that maybe this is a little above your head, you're not used to this right here. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll walk you through it. We'll be with you side by side. We truly are available to you. So, again, just phenomenal content. Jimmy, you're truly a gentleman and a professional, and we're so glad to have you as part of the Senior Solutions Management Team. Thank you, Michael. Hey, Joe, I just wanted to add something real quick before I sign off. You know, you, you talked earlier about leads, and I, gotta, I just got to reemphasize that, you know, everybody that's on this call, if you're listening to me, leads 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 that's where it's at the more leads you have the more successful you're going to be and i got to tell you uh the age lead store is a great source of buying inexpensive leads 
And, and I have to tell you, December is one of the biggest months, if not the biggest month of the year in insurance sales. So a lot of new agents are thinking that they're gonna take time off and it's the exact opposite. If you have the leads, you're gonna be busy in December. I don't know what it is about December, but you can sell all the way up until Christmas Eve, baby. And you can make yeah. a ton of money. So if, if you have the leads, uh, you can do it. So just, you know, get a hold of the leads. And, and, and I'll say this about the Age Lead Store. They don't sell just final expense leads. So if you want mortgage protection or you want uh, annuity leads, whatever type of lead you're looking for, they offer it there. Uh, the cost is going to vary depending on, on the type of lead. What Joe showed you earlier was final expense. Uh, but really, that's our bread and butter right there. And uh, so just get you a bunch of leads and get out there and, and get it done. All right, buddy. Hey, Jimmy, as always, man, uh, thank you so much for being on the call. Thanks for your contribution and uh, good luck today with your client. Thank you, Joe. Y'all take care. Hi, right, buddy. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.